Are you sleeping in a tent, Ray? Hell no. No, no, no. In a cabin. In bunk beds. I'm on the bottom bunk. Of course you are. <laughs> now, 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 please, let's bring back, let's bring back, let's Bill, bring you're, back. You're into... digging your own grave, buddy. I that mean, wasn't funny. <laughs> okay. It just and... Ooh. That's fine, because that's an inside joke between us, but if you elaborate on it, it's not funny. <laughs> okay. I didn't elaborate on anything. Your mother did me either, you fuck. Oh, God. Uh, it's all God, right, Ray. Man. Look, at, at the end of your life, you're just going to know that you're not as sensitive as Tailspin, and they'll, you'll feel good about that. Diana Tailspin. Diana Tailspin, Ross. <laughs> Almost as cool. <laughs> <laughs> no last names. <laughs> oh, it gets dropped on the show. Don't worry about a- it. Don't, don't worry about it. You know, you know when the Wild Basin said differently because Bill gives you one of these cockeyed shoulder things. Like, <laughs> Dude, the, the Wild Basins, man, make me fucking drunk. <laughs> I gotta get up in like three and a half hours, and these Wild Basins are oof. Dude, it's anytime, a, anytime you have to get to the airport bef- in your in your sleep time, normal sleep time is less than six hours. Like, what's the point of going to bed? Sleep yeah, on the no, plane. You're, you're, you time travel definitely. anyway, right? Tell us the audience your idea of time travel, please. A Xanax and six vodka shots. In a plane ride. In a plane ride. Across time zones. <laughs> yeah, two hours. Does it, does it have to be time zones on. or can it be anywhere? Uh, time zones, but in my defense, it's only a two and a half hour plane ride. <laughs> Is that in your defense? No, no, it just made for my point. I don't know. <laughs> You also know when Bill's drunk because he does the Stevie Wonder. He just does the. <laughs> That's short- what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah, I'm a little drunk. These fucking wild basins are killing me right now. What's the get alcohol your wild, percentage? Get on your that? wild basins, baby. They're only five percent, but when you just had a whole twelve pack, man, you get fucking drunk <laughs> as fuck, bros. Don't drink mine. I swear to Christ. Oh, drink responsibly. <laughs> drink responsibly, kids. Drink responsibly from the Simple Minds Sports Show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should get we should get uh, ads just for uh, for safe for safe drinking, safe driving, safe life. Civil <laughs> Mind Sports like Show. Here's, these are some role models in the community. <laughs> I'm not a role model in anything. Don't br- don't bring me into this role model bullshit. We weren't talking about you, trash can. We were Perfect. not talking about you. Perfect. Ray's not a role model either. He's got kids. Yeah, yeah you I got look kids, like a rapist, one. Rich. I don't know if you're a ra- role model either. <laughs> Speaking of rapists, you guys see, uh, we didn't touch in this last time, Gordon, Gordon Hayward's stash looking fucking we did, tight. We, oh, we did actually. God. It's a look. Did we talk about it. Oh, oh it's, like a, it's good looking stash. It looks you nice. Look like, you look like a little bit of a Gordon Hayward right now. Thanks. Thanks. Well, He's only his stud. flow on the top of his hair is a lot better than yours. Well, it's professionally done, and he doesn't have receding hairline. Welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fat Tuesdays. you right sorry hold on let me fix my hair real quick oh there we go i have the least amount of hair hey uh this fat tuesday is brought to you by wild basin seltzer actually what it's called is boozy sparkling water which is way better than seltzer Mm -hmm. boozy seltzer uh, wild basin is brought to you by the guys oscar blues who make dale's pale ale uh, old Chubb, if you're a beer drinker, just some of the best stuff on the market for beer. And in our opinion, kind of top in the top in the uh, charts for seltzers or boozy sparkling water, if that's what you want to call it. Wouldn't you say they're uh, trash can, Bill? Who's oh, 12 yeah. fucking oh, yeah. deep in these and s- within 16 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> these black raspberries are definitely a Again, drink theme. responsibly, kids. Drink responsibly. Drink don't, responsibly. Don't drink after me. You look like him. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. you look like him. <laughs> don't He's drink wild after me. Though. He meant to say don't take after me. Take after but me. Sorry. It's okay. But, you know, the wild basins are different, but best black raspberry seltzer I've ever had. Not Woo! Wow. And, I've, wow. and I've tried them all. I've tried them all. Wow, it's bullshit. I got the black too. raspberry, too, here there, Bill. Black raspberry. Sorry, my light's a little... That's okay. Now, I'll take the black raspberry, dude. These things are... Well, you're in Witsec. We've established yeah, that yeah. in a couple of I had the, the, the yummy berry. And mm. It was also a game changer. I got that one next. Sorry, Ray. Ray is on Ray, location on right location, now in an yeah. undisclosed location somewhere in Beirut. Where, how was the explosion there, Ray? Not, it was not good. that great? Okay. It was good. Do you know what the explosion was? Uh, I do. We don't want to get into it because, you know, it's a sports show. But listen, uh, if... I butthole, <laughs> And you ate a bunch of shit out of that? How did that go well for you, Ray? Uh, Wait, you, you ate that shit out of my Did you, you think that one through? You saw what happened? Jesus you ate Christ. shit out of my butthole? That's disgusting. Look, uh, first of all, I apologize. Like, I like an to... asshole, but I ain't eating shit out of that asshole. Apol- like, sincere apologies to all of the victims <laughs> and people hurt in, in tragedy. That was my fault for bringing it up. That was absolute world tragedy, and Ray wants to make a fucking mom butthole joke out of it as we're putting as we're sponsored as we're talking about a sponsor <laughs> anyway whatever you knew what you walked into wild basin look at your at your uh local establishments wherever you get your local booze tell them if they don't have it go get it wild basin and dump all those other all the other seltzer companies you, you're you're gonna thank us tell them you're, you're gonna simple minds sports tell podcast get 10 percent off that's a lie <laughs> <laughs> Tell them simple mind, simple decision, wild basin. All right, there look, this is Fat Tuesdays. This is why we're acting like a bunch of assholes. We're sorry. On Fat Tuesdays, uh, you get drunk and you eat king cake. Uh, we don't have any king cake, so we just got drunk. But what we do want to talk about um, is sports, and in particular, your very own Boston Bruins, hockey guy, Ray. I want to talk mm-hmm. about everything Boston Bruins specific to this year. Just do a deep dive. We've done it a little bit. We've kind of uh, brushed on on the Bruins and their and their playoff predictions and where they could go. But uh, maybe we dive a little bit deeper. Maybe we dive into some lines, talk a little uh, strategy from three fucking idiots that don't know what they're talking about. Um, but we can, you know, throw throw around some bullshit. Maybe some of it sticks, and we can brag about it later. Let me kick you off a little bit of a fact. As the Boston Bruins are your 2019 2020 Presidential Trophy winners the most points, most wins, most points in the league. The last Stanley Cup champion as a presidential trophy winner, your 2012 Chicago Blackhawks. Now, what, what was that season, Bill? What made that season special? They beat the Boston Bruins. They I'll, help beat. Hockey. I'll, 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 uh, I'll help you out hockey. I'll help you Boston Marathon bombing. Okay. All those things are true. It was also a strike year, so they won like 45 games or something like that. Take that home and smoke on it. Just think about it. No, they did. You're right. And two Garas won the Vezina that that year too. Uh, Fun fact. All of these are fun facts. I, you know, none of it is really relative to this year because we're in a bubble in 2020 and the season doesn't really matter anymore. We've seen that out of the recent play from the Boston Bruins. Now this is going to be released on the Tuesday after the Bruins' last round-robin game against the Capitals, which Loose I'm the assuming Capitals. they've lost. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I as well. Let, let's go. You know what? Like know what? I'll go up. and say the – I'm going to say Bruins win just to be against you too. Quest for the butthole tattoo. Quest for the butthole tattoo. Well, let, you know, they're walking into the – let's assume they're walking in with the fourth seed, maybe the third seed, who knows. The matchups will be what they will be. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll touch on the particulars when we get there. My first question to you is, in these bubble playoffs, will the perfection line, quote-unquote, show up? Hockey Guy Ray, what are you expecting out of the perfection line, Marshawn, Bergeron, Pasternak, in the 2020 bubble playoffs? So I'm thinking Marshan got hurt in that Philly series. Uh, they said it was a groin injury. Maybe he pulled a groin because he is not looking like himself. Philly game, uh, you mean? What's up? Philly game. Yep. That's fun what I said, fact, Philly. Fun fact, Ray, your mom pulled my groin last night. Perfect. Great. 
But, yeah, the perfection line is MIA. This happens every playoff. I mean, Bergeron's obviously still producing, but Martian, I don't know what's – I hope it's an injury because this is just not looking good for him right now. It does not happen every playoffs. Last year was an outlier that a lot of them hurt, but the year before when they lost in – what was it? They played 12 games. Uh, Pasternak had 19 points or 20 points in 12 games. He was a lights out. So, Pasternak's been a lights out scorer in the playoffs. Last year he was hurt. He got He got drunk. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, look it up. He did. Year, be- year before last, he was a monster in the playoffs. Oh, so what happened last year? Games. He broke his fucking wrist drunk. All right. That's so what did he perform? Did he perform? Was he there? No, but I mean, this year, okay, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna move. If Cassidy's smart, you're going to play him with Krejci. That's the line we want. That's the line they need to see. You got to balance the scoring. The perfection line is the fucking stupidest name i've ever heard in the professional sports nicknames the professional e- line what about erection line the erection line mm. uh, there goes those guys are a little old they probably can't get e- any erections anymore they're younger than you you old bitch let me give you a little <laughs> bit let me give you a couple stats here bill though i'm not going to go into the 2018 playoffs however you want to define that i'm talking about last year not the year before Okay, last year, and when they went to the Stanley Cup, these are, these are your numbers from your uh, erection line, your Viagra line, if you would, Pasternak, Marsha, and Bergeron. So in the regular season, Pasternak, about 1.22 points per game. Marsha in 1.27, Bergeron 1.22. Pasternak was scoring about 58% of the games in the regular season. Marsha 46, Bergeron 49. In the postseason, all of these numbers went down. Points pretty significantly. And the big one, now maybe you blame it on the drunk fucking, uh, on, the, on the drunk thumb injury from Pasternak. But I don't know if we can get around that because Pasternak's a, it, it, but he was that's still almost a point per game player, right? He had 20 points in 20 games. He was point games. eight points per game in the playoffs. 24 games, though. 20 points in 24 games. Well, so it's point he, eight. I already did the math yeah. there, Bill. It's point eight. No, it's, less know, point. it's less than a point. It's less than a point. It's, it's point still eight. there. He's still he, Marshawn I mean, was point nine six. Bergeron was point seven one. All of these guys had nine goals in twenty four games. So you had 37 percent of the time you're scoring a goal in a game versus fifty eight percent of the time in the regular season for, for Pasternak, forty six and about fifty percent for Bergeron. So my point, my point is that you're you're over twenty four games. It's a big enough sample size to say the perfection line can be and is truncated when you get into the playoffs. And the important part to think about then is the Boston Bruins is most of your offense, 75% of your fucking offense comes from that line. So if you're dropping down upwards of 20% of your production, where the, where's the rest of it coming from? It would be my question to you when I ask you the question, will the perfection line show up? What does that mean to you, Ray? Uh, I saw your, all, I saw your, uh, yeah, like pencil went up. Do you carry a pencil yeah. all the time? Are you like a? You do look yeah. like kind of Matt Patricia with your fat face and your backwards hat. All Definitely you need is your stupid fucking tank top. All you need is ten motherfucker. Bill, I was just gonna wonder. Do you need a cigarette after all those numbers that Rich just spewed out? That was a lot of numbers, Rain Man. I don't know if you need a cigarette in a long have time. Any cigarettes? In uh, my all right, house right now. That's tough. Right. I saw uh, the eyes go roll back in his head too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the perfection line will show up this playoffs. Do I you? Think like you? I think like you said, you know, this Tampa game that just happened, we talked about in headlines. I think they actually, this is going to be a wake-up call for them. And I think this is going to be the fuel that lights them up and we might see something. Hopefully when they beat Washington, like I'm predicting. Ooh. We'll see On Sunday you're predicting? That's right. We, yes. we did went over that. Um, okay. Bill, mm-hmm. let me ask you this. Do they, do they need the perfection line to dominate – in the, in the fashion that they do in the regular season in order to be successful in the playoffs. So the numbers that I just mm-hmm. gave you, do they need to maintain those regular season numbers as opposed to the postseason numbers in order for this year to be successful in the playoffs? Before I answer that, can I ask you one question? No. Go on. If it's a mother joke, then no, because you've hit your quota. No. Dude, yeah. That's no, a real question. Shut up, Ray. Secondary scoring. Name the secondary scoring on this Bruins team. Hey, Go. okay. I'll, um, uh, no, you can't ask me that question because I'm moderating the thing. And I'm at go- if you – the email, I asked that question two questions from now. You fucking dope. 
So let's just continue with my series of fucking questions that I have laid Welcome out for you like an elementary school, school fucking <laughs> student. Answer them in the, in the order that I am asking them, and then I will get to the next point. He didn't prep, Rich. I don't, he didn't have time. Fuck, You didn't man. have time to read those emails. I wasn't at my desk much today. But, no, I mean, you A need to – A lot of tales need, today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, need, you, you need the perfection line to show up. You have to. I mean, they're the best line in hockey. You know, you, you have to. The key to this team outside of fucking boob to Rask is your number one line. All right. Well, you know, let me answer this for you, Bill, because you're struggling. Look, you don't need the perfection line to dominate. Last year, they proved it. I just gave you the numbers. They dropped their percentage by about 20% in production, and they went to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. So you don't need the perfection line to be the erection line. You don't need them to absolutely fucking dominate. You have skill and, and you have um, depth throughout your, throughout your team. And Tukarask is a strength of your team. It's not the biggest strength. Your defense is your biggest strength, which is another question that was in the email they sent you earlier today, but two tails got in the way. I understand that. Look, what you need from the first line is them for to show up and be consistent. The one thing that Pasternak was not last year was consistent, and he didn't really show up. Look, Pasternak needs to be your goal scorer. He held the league lead in goals going into these playoffs. He needs – the one guy you need to show up is David fucking Pasnack. He needs to go put pucks in the net, Ovechkin style. Just go sit in, go sit in your fucking corner and bury those fuckers. That's the guy that needs to dominate. The rest of the line, they need to produce. Bergeron needs to do his thing. Two way player. Marshawn needs to be a little rat. Also a good two way player. I don't, but I don't think that they need to come through with regular season numbers. Um, I think last year proved that. Next question, Bill. If you want to pull up the email. Who is a surprise contributor to you? <laughs> Let me go to Hockey Guy Ray first. Do you have anybody on your list who's a surprise contributor that you would be surprised to see um, you know, make a difference in this year's playoffs? Chris Wagner. Like I said in the headlines, uh, he's the only guy with two goals in this uh, playoff bubble so far, or round, round robin, robin. rather. He, round robin. So he's a surprise for me. Uh, I mean, he's the only one stepping up right now, it looks like, on offense. So big surprise out of him right now. Hockey Guy Bill. Bill. Charlie Coyle. That's a surprise. Charlie. That's a that's a surprise guy to you. Not he's not much of a surprise, but he's been one of your top three forwards in top two forwards, maybe. Yeah, I think. I mean, he's your guy outside of the your perfection line. He's the guy that you need to step up the most. He dominated the playoffs last year. He led the team in goals last year in the playoffs and points. I mean, he he's not a surprise, but he's a guy you're going to need. You know, and you, you're paying him. You're paying him money to be the guy, that guy. You're paying him to be the second line center next year. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so I had Coil at the bottom. I have a couple, and I'll lay them out for you guys. I had Coil at the bottom of my list, and I literally put Coil. Not a surprise, but important. So, way to lay that out, Bill. Uh, I not really. I didn't not really to take supplies, it. But I, I, I fucked up the take. But I mean, I just want to. No, get it's it okay. Out. You want to jump ahead? It's fine. You can run the next time. Here was my number one take. I thought you guys were going to say something significant, so my take was going to be funny and, and off the cuff. I was going to say Pasternak because it would be a real surprise if he actually showed up in the playoffs this year and scored some goals. Uh. See what I did there? <laughs> See what I did there? Look, uh, but let me, make, let me make this take a little more seriously. Can Pasternak, at 24 years old, become a guy that carries your team offensively? Can he be a guy that allows your second line and your third line wingers to take a shift or two off because of his offensive production? The way that your top goal scorers in the rest of the league do, like Ovechkin and, and these guys um, that, that just bury, you know, bury goals that, that should not go in, that allows your second line and third line to lay back a little bit, catch their legs for a third period. Can Pasternak become that guy this year? Or is he just going to be another guy on the ice? Is he just going to be another guy in the ice in the playoffs? Because he's the number one goal scorer in the league this year. Can he produce Tied. that in the playoffs? Tied, sorry. Can he produce that, reproduce that in the playoffs? If he does, to me, that will be a little bit of a surprise to me because he's yet to do it as a player. I get he's 24, but so that, that would be one for me. An easy one, Kashik. Kashik, Kashik. I, can, I still can't pronounce the name. <clears throat> That's a surprise because we've never seen the fucking guy play. 
So if he can come in and actually be productive, that'd be good. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Kashik is a fucking. I got you. I got you. He's going on Tinder. He's trying to line no, up a I'm Tinder not, dude. Can I look at He's something on fucking Swipe and left, baby. Can I look at my fucking notes? No, Let I me... can't look down at my notes. I'm not fucking texting. I'm looking at some fucking notes, all right? Jesus. It's like Nardone's class. Let me give you one. <laughs> Let me get that's for Grant if you're listening. Let me give you one more. <laughs> let me give you one more off the cuff she had one. The best ever. I always, hold on. Can we get back to that? Real no, quick, Bill. Wanna, no one fucking knows about what we're talking about. It's a high school teacher wanna, 20 wanna, years ago. I want to lay down and let her beat me in the face with a. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, big old. <laughs> Welcome to the trash can, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you one more um, option. And, Bill, you, you can talk on this because I think you've shit on this guy since they got him. I think, and, th- he, and he was a little bit of a factor in the last game, and this is what they were missing against the Blues. I think Nick Ritchie could be a surpri- surprise contributor to this team against teams like the Blues or even the Lightning that tried to beat him up last game. Let me give you quick stats, and I'll, and I'll mm-hmm. take your take, Bill. He's the, really the only – forward they have with decent size he's 24 years old he's 6'2 230 pounds he was jarring on the benches with pat maroon last last game against the lightning uh he's a half a point a guy game you know he's not really an offensive contributor third fourth line guy that's going to go in there and, and lay some hits down do some back checking um really really lean on some of the best offensive players against your opponents you know get close to the net circle pucks i think nick nick ritchie could be could be a guy that you lean on when you need some toughness and some strength and some size, you know? Uh, the biggest thing you missed in the, the Blue Series last year was definitely size and strength. You know, you got the shit kicked out of you for seven games. You know, you had no – you had no – basically you had no one to answer the bell is what they say in hockey. You, you, Nick Ritchie is so limited offensively but he's a good third line guy and the reason they gave up what they gave up to get him. He kind of came in the cash deal. I know it was a separate deal, but he was the toughness that the Bruins lacked for the last couple of years. And after in game seven, you saw it, the whole blue series. One of the, I think one of the main reasons they lost that series is because they got the shit kicked out of them. They had no toughness. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, they, they dumped no, Krug they, into the fucking board, no, broke his ankle, right? They had uh, he, yeah, they had no, they had no, oh, Brent Carlo, I thought it was. What was it, Brent Carlo? No, Krug broke his Krug. ankle. That was oh, in the Blues series, right? Or was that I the series before? I don't remember. Or was that the year before? I don't know. I'm drunk. Yeah, well, I think Krug it. played all, because Krug had that big hit, remember, with a, without his helmet yeah. on. Yeah. But no, I mean, you need that top. Year before. Nick, Nick Ritchie's not a second line guy, but I don't hate the fact that you put him on the right wing and Krejci because I think Krejci survives better when he's got tough guys. I think Krejci was at his best when you had Nathan Horton and Milan Lucic on his wings. You know, and if you get him there and if you, you could drop Pasternak down, I would not hate that line. You got some toughness on, two kind of finesse guys. Krejci and Pasternak, you saw it a little bit la- uh, last night or yesterday afternoon, or you know what I mean? So you, you Whenever you we're saw, releasing this. Uh, this will be Fat Tuesday. So this game we're talking Tampa. about You was, saw it against Tampa, sorry. Last you saw it against, Tampa, you last saw it against week. Tampa. Bruce Cassidy kind of dropped past neck to the second line, which I've been kind of preaching about. And whenever well, we everyone's talk been Bruce, talking about you know that. So, let me, so let, me, wanna, let, me, let, me, let me help you out here, Bill, because I think what you're trying to say is uh, mixing Richie into a line where he can be um, – where he can be competitive and uh, contribute doesn't doesn't necessarily mean third, fourth, or, or anything else. But if, if you want to make him your right winger, it's not going to work. And and I agree with that. And we've talked about this and, and touched on it a little bit in Friday headlines in terms of switching the lines around, dropping passing right down with Krejci. But the way I would define that is from time to time, because I know we hate the the term perfection line, but Bergeron, Martian, Pasternak are lethal they're, they are. they are lethal and i think they're more lethal when you when you start switching it up a little bit and you don't allow the other team to line up their their line changes to put the best matchups against that top line so if you can if you can manipulate it a bit drop and pass neck down with Krejci, find a window and then get the erection line against a, a lesser a lesser opponent you know, maybe you take advantage of that. So that's where you start to lean on Cassie a little bit. And 
yeah, I, you know, I think Richie and Kashik and all, and all of these second tier players are, are going to be part of that. Um, along with Coil, who, yeah, at this point is probably your second, your second centerman. And honestly, what, maybe your best player in the playoffs last year as a forward on to my next question, which is what is the strength of the team? What are they going to rely on? What have they relied on throughout the NHL uh, or, you know, through the, through these bubble playoffs, what is the strength of this Bruins team? I guess the third line, the third line is the only line that's been showing up lately past two games. I mean, obviously we don't know what's going to be happening Sunday, obviously, but the third line is the only ones that have been going out there playing balls to the wall. You saw it against Philly. They're the only ones that went out in the first period, looked good. Against Tampa, the same thing. They're the only ones out there, like, showing heart, showing that they want to play. Hot take hockey guy, right, Bill? Defensive goaltending. You know, your goaltending, you led the league in save percentage and goals against the average. That's directly related to your defense, too. So, I mean, that's the strength of your team outside of the fact that, you know, Pasternak led the – NHL and goals are tied for it, but your strength of your team is defensive goaltending. You know, you got you got studs in your defense. Say what you want about Char. He's a serviceable guy. He's not a number number one pair in most teams, but he is on this team because of Char, um, Charlie McAvoy. You know, you Brandon Carlo, Tory Crew, you got that's the strength of your team because you don't have a reliable second and third line on offense you have the best line in hockey at number one with their perfection Ryan erection line whatever you want to call it but you have you're so erratic in your second and third lines that your strength of your team is definitely defense and in in um goaltending because two is going to win the Vezina this year that's the strength of your team right there because you don't have balanced scoring and I'm going to preach it till I die. You do not have balance scoring outside of line one. You don't. You don't, but you're right. And so uh, where I'll differ from you, now goaltending is your strength. But I, I would I – would, uh, and I'm splicing hairs here. I would say defense and power play because yeah, you have the best power with, play not, with defense yeah. and goaltending, they're, like you said, they almost go hand in hand because the defense has been so good. And Tugarask, you know, Tugarask is uh, arguably the best goaltender in the league. So um, – Again, you want to you want to split hairs. I'll call this Tokarask a difference maker, and I'll call the strength of the team your defense, and then I'll I'll pair that with your power play because your power play was second in the league in percentage, and, and you know you you got a crew you got crews you got your erection line, plus Krug, and they dumped uh, DeBrusque on there. They kind of switch out DeBrusque or they put who, Coil on. Late they put Coil on there. Yeah. Who, whoever they think is going to mesh with them at best, but. You know, number two in the league in percentage on your power play. We saw it against the Lightning. They look fucking dominant in their power play. Pasternak, uh, I think it was McDonough. Goals. McDonough scooped that, goals. scooped that fucking goal uh, away from. You know, should have the Bruins should have taken the lead, and McDonough scooped that off the uh, off the goal line there in the game against the Lightning. So their power play has looked good even in in these games where they where they've looked like shit. So I agree with you on the defense, Bill. Chara has looked like a liability. Big now, liability. But yeah. I mean, what you're saying is true. Hold on. And I, I, wanna, I want your take on this. What you're saying is true now that you can get away with it because McAvoy um, is really fucking good. And he's looked good. And he's oh, looked yeah. really fucking good. I do. I, I know they won't. I know they won't. I do question if you drop Chara. Do you drop him? Nope. Nope. Don't finish your question. You're not going to do it. You're going to pair him, and you're going to live and Give die. Give me a fucking Carlo McAvoy line. No, Carlo. I th- I love Carlo and, and uh, Krug. You know, I mean that that is, and then you're you're going to roll in whoever. Lazan has looked good. Lazan look has been your He's best defender. Good, you're, you're third. In the first game, he was your best fucking defender. No, I'm you're not. Third, look, yeah, let me spit. Let me spit good. shit against the wall here and see what sticks a little bit. I understand. Zidane Char is your captain. He is steadfast. He is in there. He he can't clear the puck to save his fucking nope. life, but he's still 7'6 or whatever on fucking skates. He's a mammoth. He's he's hard to get around, and he's the leader of your team, and he's paired with McAvoy, and you're not going to fucking break up the chemistry going into a bubble. I understand you're not going to drop him. I just think of the opportunities and what McAvoy could do with with a guy that could skate with him on the other, si- on the other side of that pairing, and 
motherfucker, McAvoy's look good. If you if if he didn't have to make up for a lot of the shit Chara's been shitty on, he could be a real difference maker, man. Think about the right, the left light the right left pairing, and I believe Carlo and McAvoy are both the same shot right shot pairing. And Bruce Cassidy does does is he's not a huge fan of, of switching it up. Your left your left guy you're on the left, your right guy you're on the right. So you might he, be right. I'm 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 probably dreaming on that one. I'm just saying it, they're right, either so, righties or lefties, but they're the same. So let's focus so, more on the fact that uh, Chara is struggling. As, that's what I've been preaching, as a 43-year-old coming back Old into guys. the bubble. Yep. And how how big of an effect is that going to be on this team? Is that going to be the backbreaker? I mean, you saw him with a broken jaw not really be able to contribute, mm. and, that, and that hurt him late in the Blues series. So mm. that, 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 that's certainly something, definitely something to worry about. The Last couple of questions I had on this was we, we've already touched on it. The weakness of the team, I think we can all agree, is the secondary scoring. Yep. And five on five. You know, if the strength of the team is power play, one of the weaknesses is five on five. They don't dump a lot of goals in at full strength. And they haven't the last few years. So and you don't you don't get as many power plays in, in the playoffs. All of these things are contradictory though to what they did last year because they got the game seven of the fucking Stanley Cup finals, and it's the same team basically. Yep. They so had uh, easy, they had an easy run last year, Rich. We can all agree. They did. What do you think? But, the we, what do you think the weakest is right now, though, in the bubble? What's that? What, the weakest. What do you think the weak? What do you think the weakest is right now in the bubble? The, the defense is the defense has played the worst. I would say the defense has been your your defense uh, has been your Achilles this uh, year. Yep. I was gonna say goaltending too. I mean they let up seven goals no, and two. Tuka looked good though. Tuka looked good last last night or Wednesday night against Tuka Tampa. against the Lightning. Had uh, had several saves that went. Oh fuck! Okay. Oh fuck! He he might he might, He's he might win be... the Vesna this year, Rich. I know, but that, that doesn't mean shit for I'm the just... bubble. Ray's asking about the right. bubble. Like I'm asking it, about the bubble, Bill. We, you know, he was on golf carts eating personal pan pizzas, drinking uh, wild basins on the golf course. We don't. Doctor not... Big Mac uh, workout routine. <laughs> Doctor Big, Dr. Big Mac's top top ten. Get in shape routine was uh, yeah. ride a golf cart and eat a pizza and drink some tr- and drink some uh, uh, wild, wild basins. basins. So yeah. Tuca was a huge question mark. I think he answered a lot of questions last night against that Lightning team. He he had some really terrific uh, saves. Um, he he might be locked in. So let me get him to my last question here, which is a little bit contradictory to my point. If Tuca does flake a little bit, does Cassidy bench him? Nope. No. Nope. 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 And nope. Live and die by Tuka fucking Rask. Live and die with so Tuka. Let me ask you, <laughs> what, about, what about your take that you had before, Bill, about when he didn't start game one against Philly? You said that Bruce Cassidy benched him. It, he's playing it like a regular – he's playing it like a preseason. He's sending a message because he sucked in the scrimmage. Playing it, But you're living and dying by Tuka Rask in the playoffs. He's the best goalie on the team. He's the Vezina Trophy winner this year. You live and die by Tuka Rask. As much as I say they're not going to win a Stanley Cup with Tuka, you live and die by Tuka. He deserves to play every single fucking game in the playoffs. You do not switch goalies in the playoffs. Tuka's your guy. Live and die by Tuka. You're not benching him. You're not going to bench him. This is why the butthole tattoo is so important, Ray. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Put my, his conviction, put my gloves on. His conviction for Tuka playing is so strong but he has no faith in him coming through in the seventh game. So when it <laughs> happens, it's going to be this explosion 100% of right. contradicting <laughs> fucking emotions, like just unbelievable. And it's going to explode out of your butthole in the form of a fucking Tuka tattoo. And it's going to be amazing. Uh, I will argue that point seven. against you though, Bill. I will argue that point against you because Tuka Rask himself said, I'm not playing all these playoffs. Most goalies shouldn't. And most goalies won't because we have he's time cunt, to stretch him out. You know well, what? he is a fucking Bruce, cunt and he Bruce, is a little bit of a pussy. Not? You know who's not Bruce fucking Cassidy. Yeah. But you look, you, all right. So I'm going to use your point against you. If his, if Tuka's mental state does not, is not in the right place. Cause Cassidy had to sit him to get him there. So if you're in game three against the Panthers and you're up, Two to one, and Tuka Ras just dropped up. They just lost five to one, and Tuka comes out, and his Zen is all fucked up. You don't think Cassidy's throwing throwing Halak out there in a series up two one? 
No, He's throwing them out do, there, Bill. If you bench two thousand percent, if you bench two Karask, you do not deserve to win the Stanley Cup. Hundred percent. You do not you. deserve. If you beat, if you bench two Karask, you do not deserve to win the Stanley Cup. Well, that's a that's, that might be the stupidest take I've ever heard. Your mother's the stupidest take, bitch. All right. Do you know how you also know Bill's drunk? He always does this with his hands. He's like <laughs> Macho Man, Ready Savage. He's like like oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, rest in peace, <laughs> Macho Man. Rest in peace. Rest, rest in peace, peace. Macho Man. He's not dead to me, baby. He'll live on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Died of a heart attack, aka steroids, but in a car crash. But you know. <laughs> Step Fun into facts. a slim gym. Oh yeah. I love. Him. I love Randy. <laughs> yeah. The old classic Randy. <laughs> Randy Savage mom joke. Yeah, that's that's a that's a dead fucking ringer. Bill has had too much to drink. All uh-huh. right, last wild question. Wild hit hit different than everything else I've ever. Had They're drink. wild, baby. They're wild. Last question I have for you: Who has the most to prove? Uh, two questions. Two questions in two minutes. See if you can handle it. Bad words. Yep. Ray, I want this from you first. Who on the Bruins team has the most to prove? In these 2020 bubble playoffs, pasta just because of all the shit that happened before the bubble started. He has the most to prove from all the shit uh, with the COVID and being uh, quarantined for those that time before Toronto. He has the most to prove. And, you know, if you're the top goal scorer, you got to be the top goal scorer in the playoffs too. You got to bring it. Love it. Concise to the point with an answer. Bill, let's see if you can do that. Go. No nope. followed up. Yes, because last year's playoffs when you had a broken wrist because you got drunk and fell off a fucking curb in mid February and missed half the wrestling. All right, we year. agree. Pasternak, fucking pasta, bitch. Pasternak has the most to prove here. I think Tuca is second. I think Tuca needs a championship. He's got to win one, which goes on to my third. Bergeron, Chara, Krejci are, are third in that list, which goes on to my last question. Thirty seconds or less. If the Bruins in that group, Bergeron, Krejci, Chara. Tuca, if they don't win, if they finish their careers with just one championship, one word only, how do you define their careers? Bill. Mike Babcock. <laughs> That's two. That's two. Ray. Uh, disappointing. Okay, I would say underachievement. This has been the Simple Mike, Mind Mike Sports Babcock. Show, Fat Tuesday edition. Uh, y'all have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Mike Babcock. Look at it. Look at his record in championships. Oh, it was a fucking unbelievable, unbelievable take. <laughs> really terrific. <laughs> Nailed it. Just, just hammer on the head. Got it. Like a drunk of these white. No wow, shit, bases. Bill. I watched you take that turn so fast. <laughs> yeah, your eyes just immediately start squinting. I'm like, oh, he's fucked. I had a like, few beers before we started. I. S- sent. A, I would send a question Six. over to you, and I went. I watched your head go. Oh shit! I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> you start rambling <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll one, one time I forgot yours. what you said, so I just had to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> simple minds, baby. Oh, simple minds. Man. Love you, boys. <laughs>